Hey everyone, Vincent here from VincentWin.com and today's video tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to create this nice dirty text within Adobe After Effects using the built-in shatter effect. Now because it's a built-in effect, you're not going to need a third-party plugin to follow along with this video tutorial, so that's good on your part. But the reason why I prefer this method over my previous method is because this method is a lot easier to do, it's a lot faster, everything renders a lot faster so you don't have to random preview all the time, and you can animate more efficiently. You don't have a hundred layers to manage, you don't have to parent and hook things up with expressions, and with this method you have pretty much a, a better overall control and customization with this very simple effect, and you can customize things a lot easier individually, and you just pretty much have more control over the whole overall appearance of this technique. And I take no credit for this technique at all because this technique is pretty well known, it's pretty old actually, And but the reason why I'm doing this video tutorial is because I want to expand you guys on the knowledge of the shatter effect because most tutorials out there on the shatter effect they pretty much stop after you create three text so the tutorial pretty much ends where you have some pretty crappy looking text that looks like word art from Microsoft Word and this is a motion graphics industry and this is a motion graphics tutorial and we want things to look good so I'm gonna teach you guys the basis of uh, lighting things up texturing things and exploring texture a little bit more into more detail so let's dive right in you can see that we have our 3D text right here. It looks pretty nice. We have some light set up right here, as you can see. We have our extrusion, our texture somewhat. And you can see a slight little bevel, uh, a little bevel on the outside. So let's dive right in and take a look at this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate around this. I'm gonna select my camera orbit tool and just orbit around this thing a little bit. And as you can see, it is actually real 3D. So no faking right here. It's actually extruded. And it will work with all the cameras and lights and reacts to everything just fine. So real 3D text, keep it in mind. And let's begin with this video tutorial. So let's go ahead and create a new composition, Control N or Command N on the Mac, which brings out our composition settings right here. And we're gonna name this composition 3D text, keep it simple, whatever settings work for you. And let's create a new text layer. So let's create a new layer, new text, and pretty much type in the text that you wanna extrude. I'm gonna type in my name, Vincent. That's looking good. So now we've got to create our shatter effect. So let's create a new layer for this effect. So let's hit Control Command Y, and let's name this a uh, solid shatter effect. And make sure you change the color to something that you can see. By default, I think it should be black. We don't want black. We want something that you can actually see. So pick whatever color you want. I'll select a gray color. So now we have a blank gray solid layer. And what you want to do is um, you want to drag in the shatter effect in here. So let's go ahead and go to the effects and presets and drag in the shatter effect. So search in shatter under simulation and pretty much drag that in into the shatter effect layer right here. We can go ahead and turn off our text. We don't need to see our text. Um, so pretty much this is the core structure of shatter and pretty much what it is is just a simulation of a shattering effect going on right here. And by default you see that bricks are shattering and that's because under the shatter effect under shape you can see that our shape is uh, pattern is set to bricks by default. We want to select our pattern to be a custom pattern, and we want our pattern to be actually our text that we want to extrude. So already you can see kind of an extrusion going on right here, and you see this kind of annoying, obnoxious little blue circle sphere. And pretty much what this is is the actual force applying to the text. I can, as you can see, if we scrub through the timeline, our text shatters, and that's because a force is applying to our text. So if we go to the camera position right here, and if I rotate on the Y rotation, you can see that our text is pretty much in the core center of our force, and we don't want that. We want our force to be away from our text, so our text does not shatter. So if we go under force one right here, and uh, increase the depth, you can slowly see that our, um, our force is moving back, and our force is not touching our text, and our text is not shattering. And that's what we want. So I'm going to reset our camera back to zero degrees on the Y rotation. And now we can go back up here and change the view from wireframe plus force to rendered. So we want to see our overall thing. And so let's dive right in. First of all, we have our shape. We have our pattern set to custom and our custom shadow map to our text, which is perfectly fine. As you can see, our text looks kind of plain, looks kind of flat. It doesn't look 3D at all. And that's because our extrusion depth is kind of low. So you'll want to extrude our text a little bit more. And as you pump up this value, you can start to see kind of our depth going on right here on our text. Um, if we rotate this on the Y rotation again, you can start to see that it's actually a 3D text. But it doesn't look so good right now because we're going to change that up a little bit later on. 
But we can come back to the extrusion depth later on once we set up our materials and all that stuff. I'm going to go ahead and close the shape because we're done with that. And we're also done with the force. We can ignore the gradient and physics because those don't really apply to us right now. We changed the force down away, so physics doesn't apply to us. So what I want to focus on the most is the textures tab right here. And this tab is actually um, pretty commonly mislooked at. People don't really use it that much, and they just uh, move, on, uh, move on with the shatter effect. But this is actually a pretty important tab if you want to customize your uh, extruded material or your, or your extruded texture shape to make it look actually pretty pleasing to the eye. And so let's go ahead and explore this little tab right here. As you can see, we have our color option right here. We can select the color for our extruded text. Um, we have three options here. We have the front mode, uh, the side mode, and back mode, which we can individually change and texturize by side, back, and front. And we have an option to change our front layer to a certain color, which I'm not a big fan of because um, it looks kind of plain if we just set the whole front to one color and set the whole back to one color and set the whole side to one color. We want to have some variation to this. So the, f the first thing I'm going to do is create a front texture. I'm going to create a texture for the front face of our text. So let's go ahead and create a ramp. So let's go ahead and create a new layer, Control or Command Y, and create a new solid. We're going to name this uh, front texture so we know that it's the front texture. And so I'm going to drag in a nice ramp, search in ramp under generate, drag that in, and we have a nice ramp. I'm going to switch these around. So the start color is going to be a nice gray color, and the end color is going to be a dark gray, somewhere right here. So pretty much we have a nice little smooth gradient from a white to gray down here. And I want this to be applied to our front face. So if we go to our shatter effect and select our front layer to be our front texture, Nothing really happens. Well, first of all, we need to turn off the front texture eyeball right here. We do not want we do, we don't want to see our texture because we're gonna use it as a custom map. And so make sure you uncheck that. And still, nothing really changes because Shatter literally takes into account that it's using this uh, this layer, the solid as a texture. It's not taking into account that we actually have a ramp applied to this texture. It's only taking the actual layer. It's not taking the layer plus the effect. So we need to pretty much flatten or rasterize this layer so it will be recognizable as one solid piece of texture. So what we can do is um, select the layer, go to layer, pre-compose at the very bottom, control shift C or command shift C on the Mac. And we want to pre-compose it. We're going to name it front texture. <laughs> And make sure that um, move all attributes into the new composition is checked and hit OK. And so now everything's um, pretty much merged into this one composition right here. And our shatter effect recognizes our composition right here. Yeah, so that's looking pretty good. And now we want to create um, a side texture for our extruded area because our extruded area is pretty much a dark gray. It's one color. Looks kind of boring. So we want to texture this a little bit more. So. I'm gonna create a new camera first, layer new camera so we can see what we're working with. Just call it camera, maybe the 55 millimeter and hit okay, default settings are fine. And if we rotate around this, oh, we need to set our camera into the shatter. So under camera system, select camera, uh, comp camera. So shatter's gonna use our composition camera to navigate through. So as you can see here, it looks pretty good in the front, but as we rotate it to the side, it looks pretty trashy. It looks kind of boring, and our extrusion area is pretty much one color. And we want to texturize it a little bit, so let's create a second texture for our side. And so, Control Command Y again to create a new solid. Name this side texture. Hit OK. And let's go ahead and drag in, let's say, a fractal noise. Drag that in. And I'm going to create somewhat of a um, brush metal effect or brush metal texture. So we can go to this, go to the transform, uncheck uniform scaling so we can pretty much um, edit the width and height individually instead of as a whole. I'm going to pump up the width so it's, it's going to stretch everything out pretty wide. And I'm going to decrease the height so we get this kind of a brush metal effect or texture. And we're going to color correct this. We want it to be kind of darker so we're going to drag in the curves. Color correction curves, drag that in, and we're going to darken it a little bit, maybe drag it three-fourths of the way up, add some contrast boost, something like that, something very basic, so we get, you know, a nicer brushed metal texture. Again, we're going to pre-compose it, layer pre-composed, and name this side texture, 
and make sure it's move all attributes into the new composition and hit OK. We're going to turn it off. We don't need to see it. Once again, we're going to go to the shatter and select our new texture. So uh, under side mode, we're going to hit side texture. We get a variation in our extruded texture right here. It doesn't look too well, but it looks better than before. What we can do now is maybe set up some lighting around here. So we can go into layer new light and we can change this to a point light intensity at 100. Hey, okay. And nothing really changes because we need to set the lights and shatter again. So go back to the shatter effect under lighting. We need to tell shatter that we want to use our composition lights. So change it from distant source to first comp light. And pretty much this is more of an experimenting thing. You want to pretty much hit P on, on the light one and pretty much mess around with the, the position of the light so we can get a pretty interesting look. So pretty much play around with your lighting until you see something pretty interesting. I'm going to select the point light to be kind of in the back so we can light up the extrusion part. So we have some lighting in the back. And then I'm going to create another light, layer new light. And we're going to create a spotlight. Hit OK. And this is going to be the filler light, which pretty much lights everything else that's not lit yet. So play around with this as well. So you get something that looks pretty decent. Maybe something like this looking pretty good. I believe it's Control Shift H to hide the light mass or light controls uh, or command ship H on the Mac temporarily so we can see what we're working with right here and let's apply a nice bevel to this so search and bevel under the uh, effects and presets and drag in the bevel alpha into the shatter layer so apply it to the shatter effect layer and we kind of get a nice little bevel effect right here going on I'm not sure if you can see in the video tutorial but you can see a nice little bevel going on here you may want to mess around with the light angle so you get something that looks Pretty decent that matches your scene. Maybe something like that. And in the original demonstration, pretty much this is pretty much what I did, except I made it a little bit larger and I applied particular shine and optical flares in the background just to give you a, ver a reference of 3D, uh, 3D environment. But this is pretty much how you create 3D text. And I taught you guys how to texture a little bit and maybe so you, get, so you guys get a little bit cre more creative with this. Taught you how to light things up and pretty much add a bevel to it. So a pretty simple tutorial on 3D text, but I think it's a lot better than the other shadow tutorials on the web. And this is pretty much the gist on how to create 3D text within After Effects, a lot easier. And as you can see, as I rotate around and animate and move this around, you can see that it renders fairly, really fast compared to the old method that I did before. It renders pretty, pretty fast. You can animate this really easily without any uh, RAM issues or previewing issues. And you also may want to play around with the extrusion again. So now that we set the materials up and the textures up, now you may want to go into the shape and play around with the extrusion depth to see what you want. But pretty much play around with it and see until you get something that you like. And then you can animate from here on out. And remember to experiment with the shatter effect because it's a very powerful plugin. And um, it's a really great plugin to use, and you might you might want to experiment with it and play around with it to get some pretty cool effect. Maybe you want it to shatter. Maybe you want 3D text to shatter. I don't know. It's up to you. But pretty much experiment with this effect. It's a really cool effect. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to check out my website at vincentwin.com, where I post a whole bunch of a co cool video tutorials, articles across the web from other places, like a create advanced lightning using particular and after effects. Um, I post a whole bunch of freebies, like free stock footage, um, free sound effects from across the web. I also updated the products page on my website, so you can easily navigate through a little bit easier. It looks a little bit nicer. New image for Cinema Impact, and also a new simple plugin or a new product that I made called Lumen Light, which is pretty much a Trapco Shine alternative, a free Trapco Shine alternative that pretty much gives you the um, ability to illuminate and create shine or light rays. It's a stripped down version of Shine, but you know, it works and it's a free alternative. So check it out. And don't forget to check out the Facebook page at vincentwin.com, uh, at facebook.com slash the Vincent Win, where I answer a whole bunch of questions, post updates, um, tell you guys what I'm doing, any future plans or anything like that. So check it out. Facebook.com slash the Vincent Win and vincentwin.com. Check it out. Free cool stuff going on here. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel at youtube.com slash xvsproductions. Comment, rate, subscribe. Leave your feedback, comments below. 
thanks for all the support guys thanks for um all your help your support and your um viewing and hopefully i'll see you next time so i'll see you next time